And my name is Jan Naokas, and I help with the programs here at the museum. And since we were doing the Forest Lawn exhibit, we thought, why not learn some more history about Forest Lawn? And we've had the pleasure of having three uh, speakers or presenters come in at lunchtime and tell their story about Forest Lawn and, and how they came to live there. And it's been very in, uh, interesting. We've learned details from each, different details from each one. So today we have, we learned that there was, wait a minute, uh, let me not back up a minute. <laughs> My name is Jan Neal, because did I say that? Yeah. And then uh, Tom Pellet is here. He's our president. <laughs> and throughout the audience are my other board members who are here helping set up. So uh, we don't do this alone. We need have lots of hands and thanks. Um, now, today, when we learned that there was a mayor of course, <laughs> we just had to see who this mayor was. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so Kaylee Ferguson agreed to come and speak to you um, at three o'clock today. So, and with her is her daughter, Hazel. <laughs> yeah. Hazel. My assistant. Nice, nice. And um, so I'll let Kaylee tell you her history because that's part of her story. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Amy. Welcome. It's an honor to be here. Um, I feel very lucky to be representing Forest Lawn. There's so much history and love and tradition in our neighborhood and in this room. So thank you for allowing me to sit up here and talk about a place that we all love so much. Um, so my name is Kaylee Ferguson. I have um, had the pleasure of serving <laughs> as a member of the board uh, since 2016 and I was elected, well, actually I wasn't, let me back up, um, became the mayor to finish Ellen's term in 2019 because she so graciously stayed on um, as mayor throughout, thank you, throughout the road project um, that happened in the neighborhood and then just a few weeks ago I was elected to my second term. So. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood since 2015. Um, I bought my home from Jerry and Jean Wentworth, who had lived there since 1962. Raised five kids in the house that I live in. Um, and sometimes I wonder about that because I have two kids and maybe, maybe soon two dogs and cats. And <laughs> it seems small sometimes. <laughs> so I think about that and how amazing that is. Um, so I'm a bit of a spotted fawn and we think about the history of Forest Lawn in terms of how long I've lived there, how long I've been um, on the board, and as long as I've served as mayor. So um, I can't say that I know everything. I'm still learning alongside of everyone here, so please feel free if you know something fun um, or if I get something a little not quite right, please feel free to pipe up and, and talk to me about it. Um, but as you can see by looking around the exhibit, there's so much history to talk about, so I can't possibly talk about all of it today or we would be here until the end of the exhibit throughout the summer. So, oh, is that good water? <laughs> so, um, I do want to take some, some time just to touch on a few things, but I do hope that everybody here has a chance to look at through all of the exhibits, which we have through the diligent work of, of a lovely group of neighbors, categorized in some different categories. We have one focused on the history of the ball field, um, one on the railroad, one on our events, um, and one on the history of the pier and neighbors of noteworthiness. So please take a look at those um, while the exhibit is on throughout the summer. All right, I prepared a little speech. <laughs> it's kind of long. It's kind of long. <laughs> this is true. But that's okay. Because I can see it. You can see it, yes. There it is. But um, I did want to start with the introduction to the Forest Lawn uh, Bicentennial, or the Centennial book that I thought was really lovely. <coughs> it captured what our neighborhood uh, was like, and this book should be floating around in the exhibit uh, somewhere, but it was written um, by Ben Forsythe, um, and he was um, the cousin of Don Forsythe, and um, his son George did a Let the Last um, History in a Cup. So, 
Home is where the heart is. It is the place that wanderer always seek. It is the standard against which of all of life's experiences are measured. Forest Lawn, a hamlet in the town of Webster, Monroe County, New York, has always been a community of homes. It was created to serve the family, and the families it has served have called it home for 100 years. People who moved into the hamlet did so because they were seeking a place they could all call home. The community has not disappointed them. The history of Forest Lawn is one of people working together to make a neighborhood in which families could flourish. The traditions of Forest Lawn are memorials to those who wanted a better place to call home. They will never be forgotten. The future of this community is bright. As long as people are willing to work together for their neighborhoods, the Forest Lawns of the world will remain that which the heart calls home. That was a nice start <laughs> to my very long speech this <laughs> is a lot. A lot. A lot. And I will say, the whole thing is filled. The whole thing is filled. And I don't uh, mind presenting, but I'm used to being able to like walk around and have like little notes, but I feel like I have to get this right. So it's a little more serious than I'm used to. So. Okay, are we ready? <clears throat> One could say the picturesque forest lawn so many of us cherish has been in the making for thousands of years, long before its establishment in 1888 as a result of Rochester's prosperity in the 1880s following the release of the Kodak camera and the economic boom of the developed railroad system. Forest Lawn is in a valley with water level access to the lake, a valley created through the powerful ebb and flow of glacial movement. Once the glacier retreated, it left behind a rich and fertile land from which forests grew and life flourished. The mouth of Shipovers Creek, which we know today, which flows through Webster and spills into the lake, was once a fishing area for the indigenous Seneca people of the area, whose language gives us the names we call the beautiful landscape around us we enjoy today, Ontario, Arondacoit, and Genesee. During the Revolutionary War, the Seneca people, people were driven out of the area by force and settled in, in the Niagara region. Following the end of the Revolutionary War, the land that is now Forest Lawn was purchased by a land speculator, and part of it became known as Shipyard Creek. I thought it was kind of fun. In 1859, a man named Samuel, Samuel Pierce purchased 200 acres of land, which included Forest Lawn. Horace Pierce, the son of Samuel Pierce, was an attorney, and along with his friend and fellow attorney, George Forsythe, saw the opportunity to create a summer oasis only a dash away from the bustling city of Rochester. Their idea was to establish a central clubhouse and divide the rest of the land into parcels for summer cottages. Members would pay dues, and those dues would help fund the construction of the clubhouse. In 1887, the plan of development was created, and the Forest Lawn Club was established. In 1888, the property deed was in the name of Horace Pierce and George Forsythe, and the community was established. Does anybody know how many times the clubhouse burned down before I reveal it? Four. We got four. We got two. Two. Three. Two. It is two. Oh, we switched to two. <laughs> good, good guess. So, the clubhouse was built um, twice due to, be, due to being burned down and was never rebuilt after the second fire in 1908. However, the Forest Lawn community continued on as we do. Cottages sprung up on the parcels, social events became tradition, including regular baseball, softball, and croquet games in the ball field, which continues to be a center of activity to this day. In fact, one of our most cherished yearly events, Field Day, started around 1900, when games included, then and now, relay races, egg toss, and a family picnic. And I will say the egg toss is my favorite part of field day. <laughs> um, yeah, I love it. And the very first summer I moved here, I won the egg toss. <laughs> and I think about toss. that. It's the one when you like toss the egg back and forth. Remember playing that game? Oh. Day? Yeah. And that was very hard to Yeah, yours was very hard to play. That's true. <laughs> so, but it wasn't always in the field, which I thought was very interesting. That came around in the 1930s, I believe, when we moved it to the field, and it's there to this day in our a uh, wonderful coordinator for field days sitting over there. <laughs> but it's still a whole lot of fun. But it wasn't until World War, World War II ended in 1945 that Forest Lawn truly metamorphosized into a year-round community. Summer cottages were converted into all-season homes, welcoming young families into the community and increasing the social events and opportunities for connection. 
Um, so what I first started talking about, a little bit about my history and who I bought my home from, uh, Jerry Wentworth. He lived, again, in my house for over 60 years, but um, he helped construct the ice skating rink in our field, <laughs> which I thought was so fun, um, with his friend and fellow neighbors, Al Dunham and Roger Herodine. So there was a lot of activity happening in, uh, yes, right here. <laughs> and I hear rumors that parts of the ice rink are somewhere under someone's porch. <laughs> Yeah. Is that true? Probably. Yes, they are. <laughs> I, think been, I think they've been blocked in now, so there's li not likely ever going to come out again. <laughs> yeah. So they're they're hidden away. They're on their jeans porch. I did come back and do what he said. He'll come back and do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we would love that. If we, we had a really mild winter. We did have whispers and ideas about putting it back in the field. But... Just not cold enough. Just not cold enough. Oh. But it would be fun. I haven't been on ice skates since I was on the single digits, right. but I'd do it again. We used to walk into the fire hydrant. Oh. <laughs> 10, 10, 11 o'clock at night, Jerry. <laughs> Go for it, Dan. <laughs> Don't give away all your secrets. You're bringing along, you're bringing along Dan. Uh, well, we did have a fire marshal in the neighborhood, so it was okay. Yeah. Before Karen had coffee, and then we go out and we spray the. Oh my God, that's right. We made sure it was a cold night. Yeah. So then we hook up the fire hydrant. So, uh, we never got arrested. So. <laughs> yeah, our, our neighborhood, we like a little bit of good trouble, I think. Yeah. We can turn we can turn our eye to a little bit of mischief every once in a while, I think so. Um, and in 1962, the Forest Lawn Sailing Club was established, which was quite fun for many years. So it wasn't until last summer that I realized that the sailing club... Um, Sometimes I'm not the, the quickest to, to come up to stuff. So I was like, I wonder why this is called the sailing parties, because on Sundays we have what is, is really kind of like a cocktail time for neighbors to get together and share food and drinks. I was like, I wonder, this is only in a cute neighborhood, maybe that's why it's a sailing party and I never really thought more of it. But last summer, um, my next door neighbor brought out his sailboat and he has all of these really cool historical artifacts from the sailing parties when people would go out and actually race the sailboats, um, which I thought was really fascinating. I'm a little bit afraid of a sailboat. I don't know what it is. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff happening at once and I would be pulled the wrong lever, but I love the idea of it, but I think I'm, I'm better at probably bringing a dish to share and having a <laughs> glass of wine, but I would, I think that that's fun. Do you not like wine? No? What's your drink of choice? Coffee. What about just chocolate milk? Okay. <laughs> so, over the years, Forest Lawn has evolved, but there are golden threads which have remained touchstones. Several years ago, the board established our shared values of tradition, stewardship, neighborliness, celebration, and beauty. Everything we do ties back to one of these values from how we help each other, how we continue to have Sunday sailing parties, again, even though now they're more of a cocktail party, <laughs> field days, parades, and we take great pride and care in our community. Forest Lawn now boasts around 60 homes with community assets for homeowners like our beloved pier and our ball field and playground. Our board continues to meet every third Tuesday, and we are charged with upholding our community values from organizing our social events to ensuring the ball field is kept in tip-top shape to representing the neighborhood in town and county matters, looking at you, the Lake Road Project. I would love to open up the floor now if anyone would like to share stories of Forest Lawn or ask questions, but please remember I'm still the fawn absorbing over 130 years of neighborhood history. <laughs> So while it was very long, it did not take one. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
asked, she asked me why I had to read that. <laughs> yes. And he had a blog. Yeah. Uh, Missy Rosemary's blog. Uh, she wrote about, I think she must have wrote about Fourth Lawn. And somebody asked the question, um, apparently Spencer lived down there at one time, and she wondered, I guess, what the first name was. Do you, does that re does anybody recall his last name of Spencer? Family name. Oh, we can look it up. It's right here. Yes, the whole history. <laughs> Anyone who's Spencer's, ever lived here is right there. Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. Yeah, she Spencer. wondered if you had the first name of Spencer. 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 Spencer.
and they were farming, the, the family was farming all over the place. They are the ones that actually um, named Forest Lawn, Forest Lawn. And that goes back to about 1820, I think it was, uh, shortly after they, they purchased all the property. So the Forest Lawn that we know here is the one that Samuel Pierce, um, along with, was it Samuel or Horace? Which one was the last one? <laughs> Horace. Horace. Horace Pierce created with um, George Forsythe. Um, that was the subdivision, and then that took on the name from there. If you, you'll you see articles in the Rochester newspapers and some of the New York newspapers that reference Forest Lawn back as early as 1850. Because mm -hmm. that, that's my, Forest Lawn was a big, big area that ran both sides of Lake, what is now Lake Road, right. and further on down towards uh, Vosburg. It was a part of like a 200 acre like parcel that was purchased and it included forest lawn and started kind of chopping it up. So and the worst thing that happened was when you removed the ball field. <laughs> the baseball diamond off the field. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe when I drove, I go, there's no baseball here anymore? Yeah. It used to be automatic Except home run if you hit it across the road. <laughs> well, there's still, it's still there. Yeah, there's still like oh, a little removable. Because yeah. uh, in field days, there was yeah. the boys against the men softball game. <laughs> or at least in my, my time. Well, there was, I remember when I moved in the neighborhood, I had heard all these the stories of just so many kids everywhere um and by that by the time i moved in they were getting older but now they're teenagers like i see the nesbits here and i think sam was eight years old when i moved in yes and now he drives a car <laughs> <laughs> emerges every winter taller than the than the fall or emerges every spring um but there are we're excited more Families moving in with kids, and and so now and the we penny see, saver's gone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> now we see the, the little uh, yeah. Now we see the the games coming back and hearing kids play, and we just worked on the playground last year because we're like, oh, there's more kids, it's mm -hmm. time for us to like refurbish this, so replace some of the equipment and paint it and made it nice. But it's exciting to see, and I think that um, who I mentioned puts together the field day. Dave, he gets tries to get us all together to play like a little t-ball games and things um, after school and work in the summer which is nice. Oh, yeah, is he a story about your house? You oh your yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have a story about my house. You know, uh, years ago uh, we just played baseball or hardball and Scott and Laporte hit a home run. They went through a Jerry Wimmer picture window. Oh, that's when we had to quit playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll 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 Scott Laporte. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that was the in the bag, baseball. Right? They yeah. 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 Jerry said, the pie they're no yeah. wiffle balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel the same way. It was the best for the journey to go. Jerry and Jerry. Yeah, totally. They put all the lights on. That's good down there. Young kids. And it was well, like rabbits. Got stuff going with our genie. <laughs> like rabbits. Everybody had kids. <laughs> and whatever. Yeah, the slavery. I made it here. Yeah, he made it here. He says it's uncurable. Wow. It's unheard of. So yeah, it's you people don't do it that way. Tradition. Well, a lot of jokes could be made about that. Al told us to. Al's fault. I wonder, folks, I have a question that's not necessarily Forest Lawn, but Shipbuilder's Creek. Uh, in Mr. Forsyth's book, he makes reference there that apparently there was a schooner built for the War of 1812. <coughs> Does anybody know anything more than that about that name and if there actually was a shipbuilding operation down there? Okay. Same I'll answer I've had all month. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I know is what I read in the yeah, probably the same can't book. Build a yeah. 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 Well, I know what my name well, is. You know what your name is? Oh my goodness. Well, at the last, at last um, History in a Cup, when Mr. Forsyth was here, he mentioned that his great grandfather had a schooner, a large schooner. And I 
I'm wondering how that was I don't won. think so, no, because it was... And he said he loaned it to the U.S. Navy oh. to fight the war. Oh, maybe. And then he, and then the Navy gave it, yeah, World War One, and the Navy gave it back to him, and then they, they, they did it for rum running. Running from the rum runners, <laughs> and then we heard a story today about how, and he told us that that he would park it on shore, and Mary Fran was telling that her uncle told the story about bringing the barrel, empty barrels, down to some place on the lake, and floating them out to this boat, <laughs> and the boat gave them the full bar barrels back. So I'm wondering if there's a connection there. And returnables banks. I was in the train. Yeah. I was in the train. I grew up in Fairhaven. We have the same stories. Your kids are missing all the fun. Back in the old days, there was a train that came across there. Yeah. It went about two miles an hour. And the kids oh, yeah. would jump on the train. I hope mom and dad aren't listening. <laughs> but, uh, I think the train down to uh, down and back. Nobody ever train. did that. <laughs> <laughs> Used to derail about once a year too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 What I train is squeaking out. Oh, Mary, do you know any story about? The hole in my living room floor. You know about the hole in Jerry Wentworth's floor? The hole is a hole in Jerry's floor. No, anything about it? What? What the rat? The rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a no. the rat. Yeah. No, in, in oh. Jerry's house. Oh, that was my house. That yeah, was your house. <laughs> I I heard. So there's this gouge in my living room floor, oh. and I heard that it was because the boys were cleaning a cleaning their shotgun in the living room when it went off, and Jerry made them keep the hole there to remind them of how stupid it was. <laughs> and so I've never filled it, and I keep it there, and it collects dust and bits and things that I vacuum out. But I said a bad word. Oh, jeez. Yeah, stupid. I'm still friends with Paul and Wentworth. Is that true? Is that true? Because I heard that, and I see it, and I think, and it reminds me not to do stupid things. <laughs> but I always liked that story. I know you guys were friends. And I was like, is there any truth to this tale? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out and let you know. Was the around when you might have hopped the train to go down? Yeah. It never derailed when I was on it, but it did definitely derail. <laughs> no, the pigs, the hot, hot dog stand. Um, uh, George Forsyth mentioned that they would walk down with pigs and for a dollar get a hot dog, fries, coke, ice yep. cream. Yep. And it's, uh, was that still around when you were there? I don't recall Peg. I remember no. Donna and Bob. It was Dick and Irv's. There was like, two other places. It was uh, Jerry was Burns was before uh, Bill Gray. There was a hot dog stand next to the clam shack. Yep. It was just like a garage with open doors. You could go sit Peg. there. Pegs it might have been Peg. Pegs became the clam shack. Oh, okay. was next, oh. But there was... Yeah. Bayside, Bayside was always the clam shack, and then there was a little hot dog stand next Jack door. Jack Daniels in between. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah, we used that field all the time. After school, you would just go to that field yeah. and play football games or baseball games. It was just constantly being used. The ice rink, it just, you lived down at that field. It was so much fun. Did, did what what you, a place to grow up. Did yeah. you know Mike Robinson? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Great he, guy. Yeah. He told, oh, wonderful. He yeah. told me that after school, the kids would get off the bus up at the corner, and there were hordes. I mean, every family had five kids, it seemed. You know, at every, exactly. every, every other house had five kids. <clears throat> And they would all load off the bus, unload the bus, and from the bus, and um, the boys would go to the field to play baseball every single day until every school day. was out. Every day. And, and then, and if they weren't playing baseball, I mean, I can't imagine the field being filled with kids. They would ride their bikes down the creek into yeah. the lake. Yeah. Does that make sense or not? Yeah, I can relate to it all. The penny saver, the penny saver trail that went yeah. up to Vosburgh oh, across the tracks and it came out at the penny saver. Is that That's right? I can still hear my chain hitting on it. Yeah. <laughs> so you were one too, huh? I walked the Penny Saber Trail many a time from Adams Road <laughs> down to the Penny Saver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I grew up on Adams Road. Oh, nice. Yeah. I love that street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and we actually had other neighborhoods come down. We yeah. actually had neighbors come down and play games against us. We did hockey games against other neighborhoods and baseball games against Adams Road. And well, the police department used to play against the Forest Lawn men. Okay. They used to have uh, competitions. Um, Did they used to play unmarried versus married yes. men baseball yes. games? Yes. <laughs> we always had parent kid games all the time. Parent kid games Could. all oh, the time. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say place to grow up. When you say hockey games back then, do, uh, is this on the pond across Lake Road? No, nope, this was they built a rink down there. They had a rink. Yeah, okay. Built, okay. And, uh, so not. We have a hockey game, parent kid long. game once a week. Yeah. So was it parent versus kid? Or yeah. was that what you mean? Parents. parents against the kids, and the parents weren't very nice, no. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to win bad. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. At one time on the ball field, there was a tennis court, a lighted tennis court. Mm. I don't I know when that, that came and went, but a tennis court on the um, field? On the ball field? Is there a ten tennis court on the field? A tennis no, court? not in our town. Oh, it, no. it's probably the it's same place the here. It was, yes, it was, um, no, they never had tennis. No, that's the field. George Forsyth had one. Oh, yeah, the Forsyth had one. Forsyth had one, and um, where <coughs> Parker's house had one. Yes, I'm George Forsyth. Dorothy Smith, yep. Yeah. 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 Way back when the club. Now, did you know that Dorothy Smith's maiden name was Dunham? I do know that. Do you do? She had a tennis oh, court. Dorothy Smith. Going through their court. home for 65 years. Dorothy Smith next door. Yeah. Just have a tennis we found court. lots of articles. Oh, yeah. and yeah. They, she yeah. had an article. Yeah. I have it actually in my yeah. house. Yeah. Very cool. Dunning. Yeah. yeah, we saw that. I'm assuming it's Dunning mm -hmm. Road. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those sunfish sailboat races, there'd be uh, 15, 20 boats out there. It was, it was a big event. Yeah, yeah that's what Sunday. Mike Stacy was telling me about, that he like really misses being able to do that with some of the neighbors, and there's not as many sailors in the neighborhood anymore. They get together. And yeah, I did. What did you say? It made me feel like just the afternoon to like get rid of my fear of like commanding a boat so I could do it, but it quickly dissipated. The more I <laughs> <laughs> My mother-in-law would sew all the flags that were on the boats. Oh, wow. so she sew, yeah, yeah, she sewed all the flags out that the sailboats would have. Um, yeah, pretty cool. What, did, what was on there? F H. What was on there? F L. No, what did you say? Florida. F L. F L A. Florida Lawn Association. There it is. He's got another story. There's another story for you. There you go. Want to tell him? Should I tell him? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is it more illegal <laughs> behavior? Oh, when I bought my house. Uh, I had somebody living there, I had a rat living in the house besides. So I, I went around and sealed them with the uh, sealed the rat in. Well, I used to feel my daughter be in the kitchen when she was young, and the rat would come underneath the feet, but we got to get cut. But I, I got to worry about him, so I thought he's got to go. So he wouldn't take point, so one day I got up on the shot, uh, the count was a 22. <laughs> and no. I waited for him, here he comes out. I'm so nervous. I'm shot, and I missed him with a bullet right through the kitchen floor. <laughs> Maybe that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the story. It's the neighborhood. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so the next day, I get up on the counter. I'm sitting there with a the, the gun, and I'm waiting for it to come out. Sure enough, there he is. I, 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 I had long shells. Bang, I let him have it. I got him. And I blew him apart. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 o
Um, no, it, it's, it's like actually built into yeah. the side of the hill. It's, oh. built, into, it's built into the side of the, the uh, lakefront. Um, yeah. From the boat. Yeah. It, the boathouse. It, it would have had been done sometime in the in the mid seventies or whenever they uh, decommissioned the decommissioned the railroad because the the um, the roof of the boathouse is built is assembled with uh, railroad ties. Railroad, railroad, railroad rails. rails. rails yeah. So. Mm -hmm. They're really interesting because Gene also has a sheriff's down to the lake. Right. So why, you know, question why it was done that way. Mm -hmm. And why the stairs came out on our property. Yeah. That yeah, was shared never, between the two houses. That was houses. never used. Yeah. That was all down there. But why was why, that how, I'm curious as to it was, why it was, never, was it originally never, never built? Never used that down in front of your place. That, yeah. That, yeah that, but, yeah, yeah, somebody made a, went through a lot of effort to build it. Yeah. Just to perplex you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe yeah. they do a prohibition. Oh. Have been he kept yeah, if the time was right, it would make a lot of sense, but what Mark says, it was built after prohibition because they oh. used railroad ties when they decommissioned the railroad and took out the, uh, the rail lines. Yeah. And the roof is... Made up the roof structure I bet you railroad, railroad, yeah. railroad uh, rails, yeah. and it was probably done too after '72 because if that had been there in '72 when the brake fronts washed out, that would have taken out that whole frontage. Oh, Agnes would have. Yeah, it would have taken out the whole. Yeah, it would have taken yeah. out the house. Yeah. So it had to be done bad. after after '72. Yeah. A lot of the homeowners rebuilt. They were. If you look in that one book, you can see about the, the loans that they were given to rebuild their mm -hmm. their brake fronts. Yeah. So um, uh, that would have been done at. Or I would have figured it would be done around that time because otherwise, it would have taken the house out with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's sure fun to talk about. Well, it was used during prohibition. <laughs> <laughs> we can make up a look good around. Story. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of these stories are kind of. Yeah, they moved in 1958, and there was actually there was actually no water up to the walls. It was you could go out there and just walk mm -hmm. and, yeah. and oh. shore, mm -hmm. and then it was real shallow. Yeah, yeah. no water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eric, I think you should just make up a story about prohibition. Yeah, I wanted to know if I could have any justification. <laughs> <laughs> just move. Too many people in your side. I got busted. <laughs> oh, well, just so we'll be lucky if we don't. Hey, brother's been watching. <laughs> we'll be lucky if we don't get hit by border patrol saying that we're immigrant, you know, letting immigrants in. That would I just tell them, no, it's only liquor down there. <laughs> oh. I have a question about the Halloween haunted walk. Oh. And how did when did that start? Um, we, um, I'm Judy Bonzik Scott. I grew up on Fairview Circle. Um, my brother used to hang out with all the Forest Lawn gang. But um, we, my husband and I, bought the house next door, and our kids were always a part of the haunted walk. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know the origin. Do you, Alan? I don't know the origin, uh, but I know I'd like it to Connor. return. It was Zach and, Zach and Alex, yep. and that whole gang that actually constructed their first one that's over by the creek. <clears> and <throat> then uh, I remember they built one that came from the creek and it circled around through the through the back of the back of the field. Yeah. And then there was the one up by um, up by Connor's house. By um, yeah, that was, there's actually two of them. Yeah. Yeah, the one up by um, Connor O'Brien's house, mm -hmm. and then the one that was down by the creek, and it just kind of got started as a little for the kids to do, mm -hmm. and then you know then the parents started bringing the kids, and it got to be more of a like a party atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just remember that. I, I know that. Um, yeah, Wendy. Wendy. Yeah, Wendy and Connor started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that yeah. 
Yeah. And they had it up in the up in Jensen's yeah. front. Yeah, up there. But there's the another one. Mm -hmm. It was spooky. It was spooky. Yeah. 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 So you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They grab you. Oh my God. <laughs> there's another <laughs> one down by the Rose Garden. Yeah. Now. Yes, that was yeah. a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, under the bridge, they had people yeah. under the oh, bridge. Yeah. I've heard about the yeah. bridge oh, grabbing at your feet. Yeah. But they put Lois. They would let um, they would let the ankle grabbers know if it was a little kid. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. I think that would be super. You were way too late to take that at the end. You want to see us spooky how you want? Me? You? You won't sleep the night. I think one of the most remarkable things that I remember about the kids in Forest Lawn was that the big kids all played with the little kids. There, there was a group that they were on the ball field. They would look out for the five-year-old as well as the fifteen-year-old, and they all just found it important to gel as a team. You know, it was just a beautiful thing to see. It really was. My favorite game that yes. they would play was ship to shore. Oh, and they would call dead fish. And they would all lay on their back, and their hands and feet oh, would waggle up in the air. Yeah. And there would be five-year-olds, and there would be 18-year-olds, and <laughs> all in between. And they just had a ball. It's oh, great. <laughs> I will say, I think the older kids are still very kind to the younger ones. I know Sam has been very helpful, and Harvey had like a, something going on with right. my son's back there with his bike. Um, and Sam, which is the next good son, who I said was Harvey's age when I moved in, and now he's driving a car, um, helped him helped fix his bike and gave him has given him Legos and Hazel has some toys that were your daughters and I know one of the families that isn't here that has a, a daughter Maddie who's in middle school last summer took Hazel under her wing out at, on it was like water follies or someday um, where Hazel was hanging out with the big girls I know that was very special so I think we still have that spirit you know, that is beautiful, that is beautiful. Um, so we still have that community feeling happening, which is really, really lovely. What do you think? Why do we not get up? What Oh, it's a good idea. Is Jan? Is Jan here? Jan, I Jan is here. Are there other? I'm just wondering. They were saying, what is the summer going to be like here at the museum? What 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 are you expecting? I'm just curious. I keep late, but I wondered where the hotel was. Oh. Oh, the clubhouse. Uh, I heard there was a hotel. Yeah, but yeah, the well, the, the Forest Lawn Clubhouse. Yeah. Was a, like so the the members could stay in their like cottages, but their guests could stay in the clubhouse. But it burned down for the second time in 1908 and was never rebuilt again. Okay. But there are some pictures floating around, and I can show you a, a very small picture that was printed in 1988 in this book, if you'd like. But there are. Uh, Lots of different photos and artifacts of what the clubhouse looked like. Um, probably various spots here, but um, let's see. So let me show you. Yeah, it's no, yeah, that's where uh, no we're, we're um, actually with all these houses. Really about two well, houses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, um, Peter and Hobbins' house, O'Sullivan's mm -hmm. house, all the way to the creek. Yeah. <clears throat> and what? actually, uh, BB, Are we BB saying like too. where it was? But right about yes. Yeah. Where like the O'Sullivan's and the BB's that section. Yeah, yeah it's the three area. houses from yeah. um, Lil's old house. Lil's old house was yes, the Sikora. caretaker's house. And 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 guessers. Well, that's Sakura's now. Cause yeah. They had that extra lot on the side. Oh, yeah. So we think our. This is an older photo of like where the pier is now. So the clubhouse would have been right here. So we're like on the boat area looking for us now. And the pier is over here. I'm going to go a couple minutes. And now Mayors, where Mayors Marine is now. Was that ever? 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 Was that was Was that was a hotel. That was a hotel. That was a those are stories I heard from my mother because they had a lot of dances and it was a, like evidently a popular place at one time.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably so. I hear there were a lot of, of uh, yes, a lot of choices, a lot of variety. Yeah. 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 You're the chairman of the board? He goes, yep, I'm the president of our genie. I'm going to fix that light right there. Right. They go out and fix the light. It's like, <laughs> they never dressed up. He was down to earth. What, what a great guy. He was a great guy. He was a great guy. You could tell something about the door, and I just could tell him help him. He had no hair on, no coat. You never know that guy was a head of a company. But he was the greatest person you ever met. He looked like a bum. <laughs> he was a great guy. Oh my God, great guy. He could do enough with four slow, I'm tired. Yeah, it's too bad you couldn't have been here. Did those, those come from our genie? The uh, pillars come from our genie, or where did they come from? Yeah, the street lights well, came from Inferno Vogue. From Main Street. From BB, right? On Main Street. They were repressed. Downtown Rest. But Mr. Beebe brought them. Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 Not that, but we had flood, we had floodlights on the lot on the field for years. Oh and, yeah. Uh, once uh, Mr. Beebe died, uh, our junior guys come down and said, "You got to take them off the floor." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jerry Gomez climbed up there and put the lights up well, there. Isn't that how? Isn't so, that how they? Well, meters know nothing. So uh, <laughs> what? What's uh, we heard the story of the guy. Yeah, what a great guy, though. What a great guy. Yeah. So it pays, pays to know somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. we, we heard a story here a couple of weeks ago or whatever about uh, those lights were someplace down in the city mm -hmm. and they yes. replaced them with newer ones or something. So. Uh, BB grabbed them all and put them up down there. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Did it? Yeah. It, was, it was someplace, I forget now. I they think in front of the Sibley building. building. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's on Main Street. But there were a lot of RG&E men in the neighborhood. That's right. Yeah. 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 His yeah. retiree. Yeah. His dad. Yeah. Yeah. I was just but thinking there right were several. <laughs> Yeah, yeah my, grand, grandfather. my grandfather. Okay. Yeah. yeah, in fact, there's some um, really nice uh, toolboxes in my garage <laughs> that um, I don't think you can buy anywhere. I think they brought them home to do projects on the weekends. And mm. yeah, so if our genie is looking for toolboxes, <laughs> just come to my garage. We never heard it. That's right. One of the, <laughs> if you get uh, any anybody that starts digging in Forest Lawn is usually okay. in for a treat. Because uh, a lot of the work, electrical work and uh, gas line work and whatnot was done uh, on the side. You know, yeah. you, you, need, you need a gas line. Oh, yeah, we'll run a gas line for you. So when, they, when you start looking for somebody comes down to start, you know, uh, uh, flagging yards, it's yeah. like, well, you've got gas line over here and you've got gas line over here. Oh, what, yeah. But that's not what you don't have the gas meter yeah, over there, the you know. The and, yeah. So you had, and yeah. same the same thing with the electrical. You know, yeah. they would do yeah. the electrical right. on the weekend. I want, yeah. I want to say something about Mark. Uh, he took the line from the lights, street lights, and the, the two lights there in front of him. Uh, yeah, the two street lights going to. Uh, yeah. He took yeah. the underground, all the way from there to the down to the docks. Oh wow! Yeah. 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 He did the. So you laid them, Jerry laid the water. So he did all the digging. We never got credit for it. We did all the digging. Yeah. Well, I, I, got down, I got down there. These two guys, Jerry and, and Al, are down there with this, you know, 600-pound ditch witch. And Jerry's on one handle and Al's on the other handle and they're trying to get this thing to move down the, down the pathway. And I said, you're not doing, <laughs> not doing it right because they were... You had to clamp the handles in order to make everything move. So either the dit, either the digger ran or the wheels ran. So one was grabbing, letting go. So something wasn't going right. So I said, "All right, let me get in there," and I I ran the the length of from Forest Lawn Drive all the way to the pier. Uh, we almost took out a couple people's uh, septic lines <laughs> while we were doing it. Yeah. You know. Okay, we, we try really hard in, in our neighborhood as a group to get things done on our own. And we come together when we need to. I think last 
it wasn't this past winter, it was the winter before I got, it was snowing really bad, and I, the kids were off of school because we couldn't go, and I was like, oh, it's going to be a nice, quiet snow day for this family at 567 Forest Lawn Road, and I get a phone call because uh, the creek is damned, and it is uh, flooding, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to deal with this, and so I like suited up on all my snow stuff, I'm calling the town, I'm saying, what are we supposed to do, and we're like, in the past we did this, or we did that, so... Uh, thankfully, I put out a plea to the neighborhood, and I got some calls about how in the past we started digging like a trench yeah. along the yeah. side. So we all, I filled up my kid's sled with a pickaxe and shovels and drug it down to the creek and spent all day with a group of people digging that out. Um, but another kind of ditch story near yeah, the and, <laughs> and you were there, and we were yeah. like, how are we going to do this? And we were like strapped in like safety straps because it was a humongous ice dam at the end of the, the mouth of the creek um, into uh, into the lake. So but we, we worked all day long. Yeah. <laughs> in the past, the BBs would have used dynamite. So it's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so we didn't which, use... Which they did do at one yeah. time. <laughs> yes, I was trying to avoid kind of like a wily e. Coyote <laughs> situation down there. So we, we got through it, but I, it's just those times when you feel like, you, you know, how are we going to get through this? And then someone <coughs> comes to your rescue and they come as a group together to solve that those problems as a team, so it's a, it's a wonderful neighborhood. Yeah, hey, hi, John. How are you, Madam Mayor? Hi, <laughs> well, how are you? Good. Hey, you mentioned the fire for the clubhouse. Uh, there was two. Yeah. Did they ever figure out what the reason was? Because I've been told uh, <laughs> it was suspicious, shall we say. Mm. It's probably oh, electrical wire. I just assumed they had no, like, building codes <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> probably. And people so, were yeah. using candles and, like, everything yeah. was made Smoke of, like... Because there was a thing about no oh, no food or cooking in the room. Yeah. So maybe there was someone who violated mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, probably after one of the social yeah. events. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any pictures of inside that hotel? I don't think I've ever seen inside. Mm -hmm. Not that I've seen. You know, that would have been interesting to see what the rooms were like. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think, just like Eric's story, we can maybe make one up about foul play. I did see a news article from the precursor to the Democrat and Chronicle that mentioned um, suspicion, the second one being a suspicious fire. And that was being looked into as to whether or not it was a insurance uh, issue, you know, because there was nothing left of the building. There's a picture there of, of yeah, one of the two fires. There's nothing left except the fireplaces. Yeah. 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 Can we have a little round of applause? Okay. For Thank you so much for the neighborhood. I love my house.